Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Enthador and the town of Forest Home. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dwarf Fortress version 0.43. And a lot has happened since the last episode. A lot of time has passed. So let me just quickly summarize for you all that's going on. We're building quite a bit, as you can see. I also cut down all the trees here that were not fruit trees. In fact, it looks like there's another one. Let's see. Apple. Okay, that's good. Apple. All right. Apple. And apple. Okay, so all we've got right now are apples. But I cut down all the walnuts and stuff, even though I know in the game, apparently it's okay for the dwarves to cook and eat nuts. In this version of which I generated this world, from what I understand and what I've been told, they will not eat the nuts. So it's kind of a waste of time. Moving right along, I have completed the storage area and the crypt. The storage area now goes up to four stories, and the crypt also goes up to four stories, but as you can see, it gets progressively smaller as you go up, and on the top we have four statues. I didn't think the storage building was grand enough to warrant statues. So then moving up here, we have our hospital. So this here is our hospital. This is just our well room where regular citizens can come and get water. These are two hospital rooms, and this is the room right here for the chief medical dwarf, who I haven't named yet. Maybe we'll do that in this episode. Up here, we have eight more hospital rooms, and I put extra containers here because I don't think a hospital can go over multiple Z levels. So this is technically the game is viewing this as two different hospitals. And then finally, up here are rooms for three more medical dwarves. They might not be the chief medical dwarf, but I have a number of dwarves with like surgery and good skills, so they're going to be there. So this building directly to the north here, this is where we're going to be doing all of our smelting. So I've got three smelters here. I have coal stored here. As you go up to the next floor, I have tetrahedrite and cassiterite is what I've been using here, but we're out of it. And then up here is just in case we discover some more ore of one type or other we can put up here. And that's that. Probably should have put some statues on top of the hospital. Maybe I'll do that later. But for right now, let's profile a dwarf. All right, actually, I haven't got this set up. So we are through 225. And was it? It's two, 158. So 158 to 225. All right, let's see what we get. 225. Wow. That doesn't seem all that random. 225 is Potatosaurus. All right, let's take a look here. Units. Potatosaurus is currently getting a drink. Potatosaurus' last name means blush whips. Hmm. And Potatosaurus is unmarried, has numerous relatives, however, but none of them, it looks like, are in the fortress until we get to the ants. And then we have Mr. Sereth, Tristanus, Smith Masters Jr. Actually, these might be people from Sandpillar, not from Forest Home. Ixchel is an uncle. Oh, okay, here we go. Pea Soup is in the fortress and is an uncle. Eilard from Sandpillar, cousin. Bravod the Wise is a cousin at Forest Home. As well as Hunter, Jasso, Mahat, Ingramish Redbeard, Menadon Balder the Great, Bork Glasgow, Solius Poudreau, Doodlejack, Black Tweety, Kizab Cabnul, and it looks like a lot of friends. No grudges. All right, cool. And Potatosaurus is a woman, and Potatosaurus feels so good. I feel good, says Potatosaurus, and she feels euphoric due to inebriation. No kidding, that's why she feels so good. Within the last season, she didn't feel anything after sleeping without a proper room. She was blissful, dining in a legendary dining room, and she was interested after watching a performance. It's a good point she brings up. Now, it would be completely insane for me to try to build a house for every single dwarf here. Now, as you've noticed that the crafts dwarfs, so the most important dwarfs, the nobles and crafts dwarfs, I have built bedrooms for them above the workshop in which they work. But for like every dwarf, oh my god, that'd take forever. But I might make a better dormitory 
Maybe a group of different dormitories. We'll figure it out. Let's see, she's 32 years old, so relatively young for a dwarf. Born on the 20th of Moonstone in the year 129. Potatosaurus likes chert, bismuth, white opal, crystal glass, giant lion, tamarind, leather. Is that all one thing? I don't know. Giant hedgehog bone, alpaca wool, the color ash gray, battle axes, tables, the words of the oracle of lutes, and the sound of the fragrances of rhyme. When possible, she prefers to consume tarp or carp. She does not like eating tarps, but carp, the fish, perch, and spelt beer. She absolutely detests blood gnats. She has good creativity, but she has a large deficit of willpower and an atrocious spatial sense. So that is Potatosaurus. And another thing I'd like to do before we move further is I want to show off another awesome image by Kate, a.k.a. Artie Angel 3. And this is Henrik. Now remember, Henrik is a woman, and I think this is the first woman, actually, that Artie Angel has profiled for us. And you can obviously tell, I love these images, they're just so well done, and you can tell it's a feminine dwarf, and especially I want to draw attention to the hair, the long hair, and the eyes. But overall, Henrik's face is rather long compared to our other dwarves, but still another beautiful, beautiful portrait by Artie Angel 3. So thank you so much. All right, back to the fortress. Oh, I didn't show you this. This is our leather working shop. And above it is the bedroom of our leather worker. And that is Prospero. Prospero is the leather worker because no one in the fortress had any type of leather working skill. But Prospero was ranked the highest as a potential leather worker because Prospero likes leather. So, figured might as well make him happy. Or her. And, uh, let's see what else. I'm starting to put floors around here with my blocks because I want to clean this place up. So it kind of looks messy right now since it's all outdoors and you've got all these different colors and bushes and shrubberies. So eventually this is all going to be paved over. Except for this, of course. And I'm hoping that we get more fruit trees. We did get one new one, which is great, but... I wouldn't mind seeing something besides apples. I thought I saw cherry out here somewhere. That would be neat. Cherries are cool. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not seeing any cherries. There's more apple. Hazel. Apple. I guess we're just big apple tree territory. Apple. Yeah, there's apple trees everywhere. Willow. It's not an apple. How about this one right here? Apple. <laughs> I would. All right. So maybe there aren't cherry trees. Maybe I'm mistaken. Thought there was, but it looks like they might just all be apple trees. So that's really where we stand. But the reason I'm bringing you back right now is because I want to start working on our wells. So let me show you kind of how that works. We have excavated out this little area, this little tunnel leading to a sewer system. This lever right here, and sorry about all the noise. I don't know what makes that exactly, but I might have to get rid of that noise too. This lever controls a floodgate right here, which leads into a three deep cistern, as you can see here, that's all been polished and ready to go, and goes up to our wells. So the only way we need to get this started is to do a channel. And I think the channel is going to be right here. Actually, I'm thinking of doing it here, because then the water will come diagonally, and there won't be any pressure. Well, actually, I think the pressure comes after, so I don't think there's much I can do regardless. So... Well, whatever. Let's just try it. I'll channel here. Alright. Here we come. Eventually. An Aru is up here somewhere. There we go. Done. All right, so the water from the creek is now falling down the stairs, falling into our cistern. Perfect. Okay, we're filling up the first floor. Wait till that gets to be all sevens. Actually, we can see it from up here. Okay, we're filling up the second floor. And I actually want to fill up the third floor. So let's get it to... Okay, here we're starting to fill it up. When it gets to, like, say, four... There we go. Well, it's, it's around... Well, it's not quite there yet, actually. But whatever, I'm a little nervous about it. 
So let's go ahead and pull the lever. By the time the door gets down here, it'll have filled up quite a bit. Four, now we're at five. All right, that should be okay. Build. Well, that's an L. Block, bucket, and a rope is good, and mechanism. That's interesting. The reason I say that's interesting is because... I'll show you if I can here. I have... There we go. We have a resin opal bucket at Zulumaz Roderkern Glade Belts the Bald Whim. And that is an artifact by Callan Oaken Shield or Orkin, sorry, I keep saying Oaken Shield. Callan Orkin Shield. And it is a resin opal bucket. All crafts or ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with point cut resin opals and round granite cabochons and decorated with horse leather and walnut wood. The handle is made from granite. This object menaces with spikes of rubicel and applewood. On the item is an image of clan board, the lignite aral, in resin opal. On the item is an image of covered molten, the bulky carambola wood crossbow in large. On the item is an image of Arab Relieved Paint, the dwarf, and dwarves in beak dog leather. Arab Relieved Paint is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the ascension of the dwarf Arab Relieved Paint to the position of Queen of the Oaken Flags in 60. So my question is, why aren't we using that bucket to build these wells? We have a block, but all we have is a walnut wood bucket. Weird, right? And actually, we need more mechanisms, don't we? Let's get right on that. There we go. So let's get those built. Oh, and actually, we can cover this now. So let's build a floor. Alright, perfect. So except in the frozen season, it will continue to fill up. But and I'm going I'm going up, not down. But there we go. Our cistern is all ready to go and all safe. Perfect. Actually, I'm you know I'm gonna build a door. I have one schist door that I didn't know what to do with. I'll put it right here. I can lock it, and our doors will only come into this little sewer system when necessary. Guys are not expert well builders. All right, I think we have enough coal. We stopped smelting for a bit because we ran out of coal. But let's melt a metal object. And let's melt some tetra. Okay. Same thing here. We only found a very small amount of cassiterite. So the reason why I'm melting objects is I've set a lot of goblin stuff to melt so we're gonna get a lot of copper silver bronze and iron thankfully out of that yeah yeah what is it old skunky okay he needs better things i got you old skunky but i just don't care right now hate to say you're just gonna have to wait like everyone else We just given up on these wells? What's going on? Oh, I get it. We need masonry. And our masons are currently busy making blocks. So well, I can fix that by suspending. And that should send them right over to the well. Unless they're both drinking. Nope, here comes somebody. Is that Dwarf Comic? It is. Thank you so much, Dwarf Comic, for your service. And there, right next to him, not to be outdone, Felix the Viking. Our two masonly masons. Alright, good. So now we're going to do a zone here. 
And this is going to be a water source. However, it says zero. I don't like that one bit. Are they really going to make it so I almost flood this place? I guess I guess I can't actually flood it, really. When you think of water pressure, the water can't go higher than... Hmm. My famous last words, huh? But actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure the water can't go higher than it starts. And apparently, wells don't count unless the water goes right up beneath them. Uh-oh. That might be a problem, actually, because it won't go up any higher than that. That is a problem. I'm not sure how to fix it. How can I force the water up another level? Huh. I might have to dig this down into the ground, but that will that breaks our prescription against things that are underground. But, I mean, a well... I've had people build wells above caverns, and the well drops down, like, a ton of places. I wonder if you have to set a well as a water source, because that doesn't make sense to me. People have used wells in all kinds of kooky situations. They're nowhere near the water. I, I'm going to have to research that, because I think these wells might still work, even if we can't necessarily designate this as a well, or a water source. Huh. I guess the way to find out is if the dwarves actually... actually use it. And now we're out of buckets. Wood. Buck. There we go. How about we have one... Well, we're gonna need a bunch because people use buckets to feed things. Let's just have ten buckets on on order. But I'm not going to build more wells if they're not going to work, so, uh, jeez. Let me know in the comments, but I might be a couple episodes beyond this by the time this gets published. But what a bummer. I mean, the whole point of wells is they're supposed to get water from down below. So if the water has to be directly underneath it for it to count as a water source, that's kind of stupid, in my opinion. But everything seems to be running pretty well for everything. All the buildings that I need currently are built. Oh, there's what I'm doing here. I am building a wall here, but I have to build it one segment at a time. Oh, you know what else? I think I have a cobaltite throne. Perfect. So yeah, that's currently where we stand. And I hate that dancing noise that they make when they're combating. I, I might want to get rid of that. It's really annoying. Like, super annoying. Are we not brewing? Why aren't we brewing? Oh, here we go. We're brewing from plants. We're not brewing from fruit. I guess we ran out of fruit. But we just bought a bunch of fruit from the elves. No, I guess not. I guess the elf fruit is not going to work. Okay, I, oh, I expanded the seed. Stockpile, so that's working out pretty well. We're going to have to fix it eventually to be more professional, but for right now. And I'm waiting for something to happen, like an attack, because I want to expand the city even further. Like maybe here would be the next place for expansion, but I don't want to do it when there could be a goblin attack. So I'm waiting for the attack to come so that I could fight it off and then move on. No, I didn't. But you know what I am going to do is I'm going to build a statue up here, like last time, to protect us in the event of a goblin incursion. Although it hasn't really... Oh, we also have a cool statue. It hasn't really... We haven't had problems with, um, what do you call them, with ambushers. You know, there weren't any ambushers in Sand Pillar either. We're, we're mostly an invasion fortress. Maybe the goblins just don't care about pretense, and they're like, you know what, we aren't... We aren't going to uh, send ambushes. We're just going to kill all these people. That might be the deal. All right, let's just put you as close as I can. Done. All right, forest home. Looking good, looking good. Let's gather plants. This zone is set right here to gather fallen fruit. 
And yeah, it looks like there aren't any plants here to gather. What about up here? There's all kinds of business going on over here. Let's gather it right up to the refuse pile. It's incredibly sanitary. Yeah, so this place right here is pretty sedate. We just have... We just have, uh, fruit. Alright, in the last bit of this episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select a... Chief Medical Dwarf. So here we go. Let's go to... Well, this is fine, actually. I think I might have already named some of them. No, I didn't. Thought I oh, yeah, I did. Okay, so I have three surgeons. I have Zazakita, Kalem, and Justinian Lupus. And as you can see here, none of them are good at diagnosticians, but Zazakita is an excellent surgeon. Justinian Lupus is actually just decent at surgery and dressing wounds. And then Kalem is amazing at suturing and wound dressing. So, I guess it doesn't hurt to have all three of them doing something. It probably should only have two at this point. I mean, it's not like they're getting a lot of work, but it's okay. So what we're going to do is all three of them are going to be cleared of all labor. And you'll do this. You'll do this. And because Justinian Lupus is the one who... In each case, his skills are eclipsed by the other two dwarves. I'm going to let him focus on being a diagnostician. I mean, I'll still I'll have these set. Why not? But he's going to be our chief medical dwarf. And you might say, hey, Marcus, that's unfair to give it to the least skilled person. But these two are going to be busy doing surgery and chopping off legs and stuff. Did something just happen? I thought I heard something. Ah. It appears that we are at a new season and are saving. Alright, well in the meantime, you're this, 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 and this. And you're all going to do this. Which is feeding prisoners and wounded. And then you're all going to be lever puller. Oh, son of a gun. You're all going to pull levers. Commit. Done. So we have our three surgeons all ready to go. And Justinian Lupus is going to be our chief medical dwarf. Like, nobody here has any skill whatsoever. Justinian Lupus. You are now our chief medical dwarf. And so you are going to get this bedroom here. Okay. And also, it looks like Sir Gels a lot gets to share it with you. And then up here, well, before I do anything, I want to build cabinets for them all. And containers. We are running out of Cobaltite. I'm really trying to maximize the utility of my Cobaltite because, as you can see by going to our digging area, well, actually, we have quite a bit more than I thought. Let's dig that out and that. So, as you can see, I'm, I'm rapidly just tearing through this floor getting stone. What is this? Emerald? Nice! We've got emeralds, ladies and gentlemen, and we got some little thing there. I'm not sure what that is. And I think this is graphite. No idea what I'm going to do with that, so I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. Let's get some more tetrahedrite. Some whatever these gems are. More cobaltite. More cobaltite. I want to fully maximize this floor before I close it up and go to another. Awesome. But look at this. Look at all the digging these little guys have done. This is hell on FPS too, I'm pretty sure. But uh, we'll close it up when we can. 
And, oh wow, didn't even have to wait. A vile force of darkness has arrived. So ladies and gentlemen, next episode, we will address that. So once again, I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me and these little jerks here in Forest Home in the land of Enthador. Have a good one.